that you've got an event that's coming up tomorrow night, I believe. I do. Um, I'm actually hosting an event in um, collaboration with Autism Society of Greater Long Beach, San Gabriel, Orange County, um, to talk about negotiating with the school district. So I'm going to give common examples of disagreements, um, your options for resolving those disagreements, things to be mindful of if you attempt to negotiate on your own without representation, including discussing waiver clauses, um, structures of settlement agreements, and all those in and ins and outs that come up as a result of attempting to negotiate with the district to resolve disputes. What a wonderful, wonderful topic because I, I want to encourage anybody who can get to this event, if you're not having a difficulty and needing to negotiate something with a school district right now, then that's wonderful, but you will at some point. <laughs> and, and being prepared and, and knowing about things ahead of time is just so valuable. So Devin, where is this happening? What time? How can people find out more about it to see if they can attend? Absolutely. It's at um, the Autism Society in Whittier. The address is 8635 Greenleaf Avenue in Whittier. It's going to be at 730 tomorrow night. Um, we're not providing child care, but um, there's no RSVP needed and we'll have light refreshments. Uh, the best way is probably to look at my website. We'll be posting the event shortly. Um, you can also Google Autism Society. There's lots of links to the flyer on Facebook. Um, or you can reach out to my office through okay. my website. And what is your website, Devin? It's um, www.riosbarrianolaw.com. Okay, you're going to need to spell Barriano for us. And we've got it up on the screen, but for people who are listening on iTunes. Absolutely. So Barriano, B-A-R-E-L-L-A-N-O. Okay, and I was putting an S at the end, uh, but there is no S at the end, so Bariano. Okay, right, wonderful. And uh, great event. Again, no cost, but there is no child care, so people will have to arrange for child care on their own for that. Right. Okay, but worthwhile to arrange the child care for that. But Devin, you're a wonderful special education attorney, and we are getting, we are moving into IEP season. And um, one of the things that we started talking about uh, two weeks ago uh, is that, I think a lot of parents, we get handed our rights at the meeting. We think we know what our rights are, but a lot of, there are a lot of things that we can do to set ourselves up for success. So why don't you talk to us about some of the things that you see parents doing that really make a difference to you as a lawyer? Absolutely. So when you're at the point of a disagreement, chances are there are several things that have happened along the way before you feel the need to talk to an attorney. Um, and so what I look for that makes it really helpful for me to quickly evaluate a case and determine what your options are and if you need legal representation, first thing I look at is the organization of the file. Do you have all your records available? Are they organized and accessible? And can I look at things quickly to help you evaluate? Um, I, I can't stress it enough. I've seen clients come in the door with boxes of records or very disheveled and disorganized, and it makes it virtually impossible to evaluate their case. And that's not to say that there isn't a case, only that without the documents in order and accessible, it's almost impossible to evaluate your claims. Because at the end of the day, in special education, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. So while your um, comments and evaluations of the situation are important, we're gonna be relying heavily on those documents. So I can't stress enough organization and having all of your records. Okay, let's get specific here. So what a, when your dream client comes in <laughs> and they have their, their the dream organization, what does that look like? So um, there are lots of resources on um, records organization. My preferred method is in chronological order like a story. So. Document, the first document would be um, when they were age three, and then the last document would be what happened presently. So you're going in chronological order, similar to a storybook. What I would love ideally is to flip through your file and know exactly what happened first, second, third, and so forth, like a story. So if I can understand your child's story based on looking at their records, that gives me an accurate, accurate, accurate picture as to how I can assist you. Okay. Um, and the documents you want to include are IEPs, assessments, letters, any correspondence you've had, 
um, receipts for reimbursement potentially for any services you funded privately. Those are all really important documents. And if you don't have those readily available on your own, you can start by making a records request to your school district to obtain records. Yeah, I'm just thinking I am not your dream client.